city board president. Of course, any uh, public comments, introductions, special guests? Okay. Um, we want to, uh, can we approve the board minutes? No, we can't do, we can't approve anything yet. Can't approve anything yet. Okay. Uh, um, marketing communications. Yeah, I can do item B. Okay. So um, we've been we had a, a pretty big meeting a few weeks ago for the music and arts festival. The uh, basic idea that the the partners want us to pursue right now is focusing on uh, one one main event on October eighth. Although we could potentially delay that, we haven't set that date in stone yet. But what we're looking at is how much it would cost to um, take the parking lot be behind Urban Outfitters and actually build a stage, have some food, um, drinks out there, and then actually invest in a couple of big name headliners. Um, and then the, the partners and the venues around that area would benefit by all the people coming to the event and they would schedule things after or before the, the main headliners. <coughs> so that's what we're doing right now is we're getting the information of how much that would cost we have a meeting um, tomorrow morning, actually, with Siren Studios and um, LA Film School to see if they could potentially help us out by donating some items or giving us a discount. So we're gonna put all that pricing together and then come back to the committee and decide if we're gonna move forward with that date or if we're gonna look at a different date. But right now, that's kind of what they decide would be the most beneficial, is something that would bring a lot of people into the neighborhood. Very good. Uh, Hollywood Music and the Arts Festival. Yeah, sorry, that's what I was oh. just talking about. Okay. Um, security committee. Monthly report. Uh, should we talk, have Andrews? Yeah. Yeah, we've got Andrews. Okay, I'm going to keep this short because I know you've got a lot of agenda and we're late. Everybody get one of these. Here. Okay. 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 This report takes us through week 25, basically this is for the month of June. Um, a lot of calls regarding mentally unstable uh, people. Again, it seems to be the main thing we're handling so far this year. Um, very, a lot of very angry people, mentally ill and, and impaired in other ways. <clears throat> On June 15th, we got a call of a man acting strangely on Selma. We found the man with his pants down, clawing himself. He walked away and was actually grabbing at passing tourists, which is amazing. He uh, stuck, uh, he put a screw in his nostril and he put a popsicle stick someplace it shouldn't have been. I um, called LAPD and they uh, put a 5150 hold on him and took him to the hospital. Um, on the 21st, we helped out with the Hollywood Make Music program. Um, it was nice at the W. They had a lot of uh, musicians and what per and singers performed there during the day. It was really nice. We provided a lot of extra patrol. Um, most of the singers seemed to be from the Musical Institute, but there was an employee from the W Hotel and from a local optometry sh shop that uh, performed. And uh, it was good we were there. There was one guy that wandered in there, was kind of spitting on people, and we kind of ushered him out there before he became a problem. Um, the 22nd, two men were causing a term of uh, disturbance at Phil's Coffee, Phil's Coffee on Sunset. One was in the bathroom refusing to leave, the other one was running in circles outside. The man, the man in the bathroom agreed to leave. The other man tried to enter the business, and we asked him to leave. He ran to the CNN building. Their security promptly chased him out. He ran down Kawanga, climbed onto a windowsill, and started doing pull-ups on a, a bar. Then he dropped down and started doing push-ups. And then he ran into traffic, almost got hit by a car. And once again, we called LAPD and another 5150 hold was placed. Um, after that, we had a call of a woman causing a disturbance at the Chase Bank, 1500 Vine. Officer spoke to her. She was extremely hostile, yelling profanities at our officers and the employees of the bank. Um, during this time, a man jumped into the fountain out front, and we figured this was going to be an interesting summer for sure. Um, during this period, my officers and I walked by Settle Park many times. We found uh, numerous adults in there lying on the ground. Many had backpacks and bulky uh, items. 
um, quite a few were smoking marijuana and uh, very few children in there for obvious reasons. Um, on one particular day, the 23rd, our officers did a walk through of the park. Um, they saw one man in his underwear standing there. Um, as they were leaving, they were confronted by a very, very hostile man. He was questioning our officers' right to be in the park. Um, he was so angry the officers were preparing, they thought they were going to be attacked. And he told our officers he was a convicted felon and just gotten out of prison. <coughs> so that's kind of the theme. I don't mean to be redundant, but this is, this is just a fraction. It's pretty much every day now. We had one guy on Saturday, we had seven radio calls in both bids where he would go into businesses and just screaming and calling a disturbance. And we just kept getting call after call. And you know, we, sometimes there's just nothing to do with these people. Um, we attended 11 meetings during this period, um, representing you and sharing resources. Um, outreach, of course, is one of our problem solving goals. And during this period, we met, a, we met a couple actually some months ago from Tennessee. They came out here to be in the movies, and like many people, they ended up homeless and they're living in their car. We've referred them to PATH and the church and other places. And a couple of our officers actually introduced them to their manager of a local restaurant and got them work. So it's an ongoing project, Carrie's aware of them also. Um, so we're real hopeful we'll be able to get them off the street soon. And, uh, Hollywood and Highland, Transient, uh, Shoeless, and in need of help. We gave them some shoes, a couple blankets, a t-shirt, and a hoodie from an emergency store clothing that we keep in our office. Uh, we had a woman on the 15th refusing to leave the rear of the business. This was on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, we spoke to Sammy and it turned out she was she was deaf. So the people that called us thought she was a problem, trespassing. She's actually deaf. She was lost and scared, trying to get to the Metro. We actually just drove her to the Metro so we could make sure she was safe. And she knew how to get home from there. Another similar um, call we got at uh, the Starbucks at 6302 Sunset, a man was lost and confused, told us he needed his medications. Uh, we ended up calling paramedics, they treated him. Um, he had a medical bracelet and our officers were able to find the uh, living facility he was at, called them and they came and picked him up. So that's kind of our, our method. We don't we just leave these people on the street lost and don't know where they're gonna end up. So when we can, we just take them, make sure they get home. Our deployment stayed the same, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday. And during this period, our officers received training in communications, public relations, criminal liability, and legal update. Very good. And just to note, we have a joint security meeting on the 28th at 9 a.m. at this office for the So let's go back to the beginning. Uh, action items since we now have the one. Yeah, we can officially call the meeting to order now. Okay. Call to order. Welcome, everybody. Uh, again, any public comment, introductions, guests? Okay. Uh, approval of the board minutes from June 20th. Everybody has a copy of those. Any comments? You can speak now. I'll move to approve. <coughs> Second. Kitty. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Uh, Kitty uh, Treasurer Report. Thank you, Pat. Um, yeah, so we just uh, received word from the city that we have $158,000 coming in from assessments from this year, which uh, will be reflected here on July. Um, as of everything else, we continue to maintain on track. I'm working with Jose, who's our treasurer, and as you recall, last month we had some delinquencies, some of which were from the CRA. So we will be working to uh, collect those. We're still trying to figure out, and Adam is helping me with his contact to figure out how we can get a hold of them and see how they can get those monies paid. So we're moving forward on the delinquency. Um, from a cash standpoint, we continue to stay. That's the $76,000. That's the $76,000, yes. Right. Yeah, and a good portion of that is again uh, the LUSD, which we will not collect. We don't collect. Um, but everything else continues to move forward on, on pace. And um, as I mentioned last month, if we keep up at this rate, I'm going to knock on wood, um, we would have more than enough to meet our kind of surplus that we've been doing for our budget to write out for the end of this year. We, we typically budget about 65000 to roll over for each of the remaining years of the bid. So at $130,000, we are spot on. Very good. So do we want to make a motion to approve the uh, financial statement for June 30, 2016? Uh, 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Thank you very much. And uh, we also have enclosed the 2015 tax return. And uh, we just acknowledge receipt of it and then see more questions. Yeah, we're just looking for approval and just acknowledging that we had given a copy to all the board members. Um, this was done by Fabio Bosco, the same guy who does our financial review. Um, there's nothing that you need to do with this other than just acknowledge that you've received it and that you approve it and then he will file it. For the record, so how many, how many years have you done this for? Is it our bid or this neighbor's bid? T has done this for Sunset for two years before that RBZ was doing our tax return for the Sunset bid. Um, and he's been doing the Hollywood bid for, I want to say, close to seven or eight years. Okay, so uh, we want to make a motion to approve the tax return. <coughs> okay, a second. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Right. Opposed? Abstentions? Unanimously approved. Thank you. Uh, new business um, nominating committee. Bill, do you want to take this since Mike's out of town? Just, uh, I know you guys interviewed Jack. Yeah, we've interviewed Jack, and um, I think you had mentioned there's one other person we wanted, at least one more person we interviewed, right? Yeah, we, we're going to have another opening, um, as it says, for the next item. This will be Kitty's last meeting with us, so we will have another open seat, um, which we, we have received one application for, right. and we already conducted an interview, and possibly potentially two more applications actually have come right. out now. So we're going to end work. So we've done two interviews. We're going to do two more mm -hmm. at this point, right. and then we'll make a good decision. Right, but Jack, you can appoint today for filling oh, the right. seat. Right. right. So um, both Phil and Joyce, uh, as I said, interviewed two candidates, and uh, the nominating committee decided that they would like to recommend Jack, correct? Right. Right. Um, to serve the remainder of Elizabeth's term, and Jack is here with us. Yeah. Do you want to give us a little bit of background about yourself and your property? Yeah. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm Dex Tagman. Um, we've been, I feel that we're running the Tagman Cultural Complex on the uh, south side of line, by Jonathan and mine. And as you guys are well aware, we've been doing a lot of outreach to a lot of community outreach. Uh, we help out a lot of people. And most importantly, we do very big and very uh, glamorous events. And uh, for me, it's very important that the perception of Hollywood stays intact and high because it directly reflects uh, my business. Uh, besides that, I, I'm born and raised in Hollywood, so I went to school on Cowingham Fountain, so my entire life I've spent here. So as I told uh, the uh, interview committee that, uh, you know, I've seen Hollywood change. She used to be filled with, unfortunately, prostitutes, prostitutes and sex workers. Now it's cleaning up. I see more businesses coming in, restaurants coming in. So uh, I applaud all of you for doing that, and uh, I'm glad to be a part of the team now. If not okay. So, uh, <coughs> nominating committee, want to make a motion to appoint uh, Jack Taglin? Yeah, I'll make a motion to we appoint Jack Taglin as a member of the board for the remainder of Elizabeth Town's term that expires in 2015. And the second. Uh, all approved. Opposed. Abstain. Unanimous approval. Welcome, Jack. Well, congrats. Yeah. Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have more on Kitty later. But yeah. come on up here. Okay. okay so uh, next, uh, streetscape and planning committee. The uh, maintenance contract update. Review of the Street Plus Company contract. So, shall we kick it off with an update uh, on our conversation we had with our current vendor, which Joe and Carrie had uh, with um, Joe Digital? Yeah, so I, um, I, I decided to get Rick Anderson, our account rep for Street, um, for Queen Street, a call um, last month after our board meeting and after the board gave us permission to have a friendly conversation. and. We received an LOI from Steve Hiller, who's here from Street Plus today, um, and I just kind of laid out for Rick what some of the concerns were with the performance of the contract. Um, and Carrie and I had a follow-up call with him where she uh, 
added on to that and just kind of explained what the board's kind of feeling was and that we were looking at potentially exercising our 30 day option to end this contract. And he, Rick understood, he didn't agree, he felt that the things were clean out there and that they, they were doing an okay job, but he said that he recognizes that these things happen in contracts. Um, we've had them as our vendor in Hollywood since 1999 and Sunset since 2007. And what he told me was, you know, sometimes these things happen in life and you know, you just walk away and you know, sometimes they usually come back. So he was open to us ending it and um, we, we spoke about uh, our employees, trying to make sure that our employees had a place to go. Um, he said that he would be able to hire those that he can, those that he was not able to keep, he's okay with them going to a new vendor if he cannot keep them. Um, but he said that he's not really looking to expand his bid operation. It's really not sound like where the focus is. And I think we're seeing that in the performance that we're receiving. So um, it was good news to hear that it sounds like it, it will be a friendly split and uh, we have already received a motion from you last month to exercise the 30-day option if needed. So today's motion is really to see if you would be willing to approve this draft contract and go forward and then we would, assuming that this is approved, exercise that motion, the 30-day option, and then enter into this contract. I'm going to turn it over to Matthew and Steve's here to answer any questions you have specifically about the contract. And he can tell you more about Street Plus as well. And uh, but kind of just to start as a base and a launching off point, just want to let you know that we have had that discussion with Green Street, and it sounds like we, we have an out, and we're going to be okay there. Okay. Um, I, uh, from last meeting, I, I recall good conversations. Uh, I want to make sure that we're when you say we're clean, there was there was an issue uh, or a question. As a way to any sort of equipment they, have, they may have purchased during their contract term, and I wanted to make sure that we don't have to reimburse them for anything, so we're clean on that front. There's nothing in the contract about that. Right. So we're okay. Yeah. okay, Steve is joining us from the East Coast, so Steve, once again, thank you for coming. Do you want to uh, introduce yourself? And sure. Yeah, my name is Steve Hillert, and I'm the uh, president and owner of Street Plus, and uh, I've been uh, operating in the improvement district uh, industry since 2000. Owned uh, two other companies. This is my third company. Uh, we uh, specialize in improvement districts only. We currently do 56 bids nationwide, employing about 350 ambassadors. Uh, we have a large presence in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, my background really is primarily law enforcement, uh, healthcare, and also now bid work for the last 16 years. So, uh, on behalf of the entire team at Street Plus, we're extremely pleased to be extended this opportunity to work with you guys and we're hoping we can uh, get through any of these contract issues that you might have any questions on and uh, we're extremely excited. Uh, this is uh, something that we're going to take uh, great pride in making sure that this is the jewel in, in Los Angeles for cleaning. That's our commitment to you and we're extremely excited to start as soon as we can so I'm hoping to any kind of questions you guys might have with me. I just wanted to say Steve has been great. We've been very impressed with our interactions so far. Um, very quick to respond, very thorough, and very accommodating. So it's been a, a great experience so far. Uh, in front of you, we've got a, a red wine version of the contract. Um, we have marked it up quite a bit, and, and we've received comments from the Streetscape Committee. Uh, both executive boards as well as our legal counsel. So this is a pretty baked version of the contract, but of course if there's uh, you know, anything to clarify, we have the opportunity to do that as well. So um, I just passed around a handout that uh, draws your attention to some, uh, some highlights in the contract. And these were the items that we got the most uh, questions and, and feedback. Uh, from the board, so we'll, we'll go over those in a little bit more detail. Uh, so first on page one, just to make it clear what everyone knows what we're, uh, we're dealing with here, the term, we're looking at a three-year contract, which is through the duration of the end of this bid, and we have a target uh, start date of September 1st. So the, the first year would just be um, September through, uh, sorry, through August, so it's gonna be um, a year from uh, September. That's gonna be the first year. Uh, and then of course we do have in the contract the option to ex ex uh, extend the term by a year with 60 days advance notice. 
actually, it's a, it's a 28 month contract. It's a, you run through the end of our current bid, and then in the event that we usually, we're typically, we find out when we're renewed, it's usually in September. So we would just have to give 60 day notice to Steve and Street Plus that our bid was renewed. And we're going to continue this contract for another year. And then after that year, we can either renegotiate, RFP, whatever the board decides to do at that point. But this would cover us through the end of this, this current bid. Are these costs in line with our budget as well? So yeah, and I, I do have a, there's a couple more handouts in the packets, which we'll, uh, we'll get to yeah. when the item comes up, but we've got, um, in the packet, we have this transition timeline, the spreadsheet. Uh, we have a letter of intent from Steve, as well as a, uh, a budget comparison that shows the proposal versus uh, the budget so can we just spend a minute on that? So sure. Let's just jump down to that real quick since Fred asked that. Just looking at this kind of uh, uh, beige, I guess, sheet here. I didn't, I didn't go to kindergarten from the color stops. But um, basically what you can see is that we are we have a savings each month for cost um, for sunset, roughly $6,500 the first year. Uh, it's a monthly savings, it's pretty significant. And what I spoke with uh, some of you today and in, the, in previous conversations, what I think we would like to do with, at the discretion of the Streetscape Committee is use some of that money for additional cleaning, which is something that we've always wanted to do, but we never had the budget to do. So we would be able to see how best to use that. But to answer your correct question, yeah, we're, we're under, and assuming that our maintenance budget stayed the same, what Matthew shows here in year two and year three is that we are still under budget if we didn't even increase our, our budget for teams in the following years. So let me ask you something. So uh, I'm looking at um, Article 14 equipment and buying equipment. Um, so what happens if there should be the event of determination, either with or without cause? So we have a, uh, uh, excuse me, 192 by 50. Um, so, how does that work? So I'm going to go. And also, when does this money? Is this is this an do we write this check or is it included within the payment? So page fourteen and sixteen, which is the middle of this white page, I'm gonna let Matthew actually speak to both of those. those we, yeah, we, let's start with actually termination. Of yeah, the, so of the agreement. There. So um, let's start with section eleven here, which is red lined out. I know that was a concern for the board. We wanted an easy out, a thirty day out, uh, without any curable or remedies. So that's why we red lined that uh, item eleven and twelve. Uh, the termination agreement. So as I mentioned, we can terminate the contract with or without cause with 30 days notice. Uh, and Street Plus can terminate the contract with or without cause with uh, 90 days advance notice. Um, and in the event of termination by CHC without cause, uh, we would owe the balance of the capital equipment to Street Plus, uh, Street Plus within uh, 30 days of the termination. Um, and uh, if we terminate the contract with cause, uh, or if Street Plus terminates the contract, then Street Plus would owe the balance of that capital equipment. And the equipment is, to answer Drew's question to the equipment is purchased by Street Plus, is insured by them. Um, everything is built into our monthly, that 303,000 in the first year, those, that includes the payment for that equipment. So there's no, nothing that comes in our name, nothing that we're holding the bag for in terms of being liable for property or anything like that. So if we were to terminate them without cause, if it was because we, we had a bad hair day and we were to terminate them, right. we write them a check for the unamortized portion, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, is it an amortization schedule or a straight line schedule? Amortization schedule. At what cost? Yeah, we're doing 28 months. At what cost of capital? Uh, six. And who gets the equipment? If I terminate you, or to terminate you with, with, without cause, and we paid off uh, all this capital, let's say we do with the first review, just stretching the point. Who gets the capital? You do. Okay. I had a question. Sure. On the cleaning services, it says, all you shall be performed some days we depending upon the need. Is that, there's not, in terms of performance, there's not, is there a frequent? Frequency that is being because there's no there's no exhibit in the back. Yeah. So yeah. So it's all hard of, to know what the performance standard is and how is it like all day long? Is it once a day? Is it sure. Certain streets every other day. It's not really clear. 
Yeah, so Steve, based on his experience with other accounts, will bring some kind of benchmark standards, yeah. uh, and will be working directly with us to create that, that schedule and uh, the frequencies. Yeah. Um, but we do have the, um, the service schedule that's been outlined in the management plan that has the, the number of times something has to be pressure washed. So based on that, we would go backwards and, and create a schedule. So the management district plan dictates zones of benefit, and that's what we, it's basically our governing doctrine, our doc, uh, document, you know, in terms of how we manage and run the bid and its services. So for instance, zone one streets get washed one time a month. So we would have to operate from that standpoint, what Matthew's saying, and then we would build out from there with Steve's consultation. But the minimum services that are required by the MVP will be, will be the what? Will be what's in the contract. But does it say that anywhere? It will be an attachment as a scope of services, yeah. Just like it was in the Queen Street contract. Yeah, it's, se it's separate from the regular, or it was with yeah. Queen Street. It's separate. Um, because I'm looking through the exhibits, and there's no reference. It's, yeah. I don't see it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying it's I mean, I'm not saying that, I'm not being stupid, but if you're asking today for board the ability to negotiate and approve the agreement, it's hard to do that if the agreement we're looking at is the by the way, I'm okay with it. I'm just saying that, I mean, I trust that you're I'm just saying sure. I go through this all the time in janitorial contracts and stuff, and then you don't know, okay, what's the frequency? I force my people work for me to basically create very specific matrix charts to tell me how many times are things going to happen, which sounds like you have it. It, it exists, it's yeah. Just, it's only you're holding it up. As far as the frequency, though, that is part of what, you know, our, our what we pay for our service to the bid, right. the zones that were set up when we right. originally set up the bid. That's so what I'm so saying we should, we should reference, I mean, if you're doing a contract that you need to reference another document that's formal. Yeah. yeah. And then secondly, I think that if you are going to have performance standards, <coughs> you should have something that says, we will negotiate performance within the first 60 days of the start of this contract. So you have a, a date where both parties are, are bound to create those standards. I think it's just we can definitely we can definitely have that. Not a big deal. We'll give everybody you can okay. And I'll before this meeting is over, you'll have a copy of the scope of services because it's on my desk, so I'll just print it. That way just everybody has it so you're you're aware of it. So we can before the meeting's over we'll get that to you. I had a question on the term. Um, so we're obviously going through the remaining bid term and then the, the and I understand the uh, the one year deal, so that we have the uh, if we know that the bid's going to be extended. What what about was it discussed the idea of creating some options in there for the potential of the extended bid term, so that we've got some some locked in time and rates? Um, I mean, no, no, it wasn't. I mean, we can't do that. If that's something that you guys want to explore, we can definitely look at trying to extend it past, you know, having an option for a longer period after. It would just seem to me to have those options in place if we're happy and we want to extend it and we know what the, uh, the, cost, would, uh, the cost would be in advance, it just makes sense to me to have those options in place. As far as doing that, though, is that something that we can work into place but still approve the contract as it is because anything that holds us up will push this whole schedule back and we won't be able start on September 1st, Yeah, I think the motion today, I mean, it gives us room to negotiate. It's subject to no material changes. And the other thing you have to remember is Hollywood has their board meeting next Thursday. You, you would both have to, they're gonna have to approve it too. Yeah. So we want to make sure that everybody, I think what we're looking for today is, as it says, pretty much exactly the motion is in agreement with the board, our, our chair, who is Fabio, who I spoke with today on the phone and, and is okay with what he's seen. And that was, gave me permission to say that at this meeting, but it obviously doesn't count towards the vote, but just letting you know what his thoughts were. And um, our streetscape chair, who's Chase, and we would work with the Hollywood board and assuming that everything is co you know good to go, we would sign off on this with some negotiation, like Phil's recommendation with a 60-day um, you know, performance schedule being determined that. We could, we could explore options in terms of cost and having a longer option at the end of the contract. As long as it's no material, uh, changes, you know, major changes in here, I think is what we're looking for today. Can I ask one more question? Sure, you can ask as many questions as you want. On the increase from year one to year two, 
relatively small. I mean, you're going to be able to cover your cost of living increases and health insurance. Do you cover health insurance? Yes, we do. So, what we do in our what we do in our contracts is, and I, I think we did in the original 2013 proposal, is that we said during the course of the 28 months, if uh, our health care costs go up, we will not pass those costs. That's what you. I'm asking. Is usually I, I might have to take it. I have a half because we have we have great national plans with great rates, great history, great demographics. So our costs um, for the last three years of that, now we've got an eight percent decrease every year. Right. So we put in our contracts for our customers that we will not, if we do have to increase it, we will not pass it on. And you're not, we'll eat you're not union. Yes, and we'll eat that. Yeah. Okay. okay, great. Thank, Thank you for your I don't know if you know the answer to the question. Um, are we bound um, by, the char by our charter to observe uh, living wage, uh, any sort of minimum wage? Are we, are we charter bound by any of that stuff? I'm just asking if it's an ignorant question, I don't know. The only thing that I'm bound by because my third party vendors are been regulated by the unions. Yeah, well, you're bound to be aggressive. I can't forecast. But well, we're, we're not bound by any of that under our charter, right? We, we've Thanks. always actually, um, I'll tell you, there's several bids um, who are struggling right now with the minimum wage hike. Um, just being transparent with you guys that because they have not been at that level, mm -hmm. um, we have. And I've actually, I take personally a lot of pride in this. In, with our maintenance guys, we've always paid a living wage, so we've always been well above the rate increases. Um, um, Steve has actually come in at what our current vendor is paying in car guys. So we're at, I think, our lowest paying paid guys at twelve dollars an hour, which is well above the minimum wage. And so what we would do with this contract is through twenty eighteen, with the increases that have come every July. Um, we've already kind of projected out that we would be okay at that rate until 2018. Now, after 2018, when we get in the new bid, we're definitely going to have to, and this goes to Brian's point a little bit, um, there's going to be, you know, some ex, ex, excuse me, increased costs because of the minimum wage hike, because once we get to $15 an hour, then we're looking at a pretty significant increase after 2018 with our guys. So, um, but for the length of this contract, we would be covered from those, from those So I think, given the conversation, we're looking for a vote on whether we can authorize the staff in connection with the board president, streetscape chair, and legal counsel to negotiate and approve the maintenance agreement with two plus, subject to no material changes. We're going to all get a copy of the uh, service service schedule. Yeah, Devin's doing it right. I'd like to add to this motion. Also, be contingent on the a full documentation of the document with all the attachments on it, and the addition of the uh, sixty-day negotiation on the performance plan. I'd like to see it before it gets run on. I want the board to have the uh, ability to see that contract before, before it gets run. You can have the ability. The problem, the only thing is, if there's something in there that you are not okay with. Um, or how can I put it? It doesn't. This is your moment to authorize us, basically, to enter it. Yes or no? Otherwise, we're going to wait another month. So that's I don't think. I think it's just. A, I think it's a. It's, it's, it's a proper procedure and protocol that the board should see a final contract before it gets signed. I don't think anyone here is going to nitpick you though. It's not about nitpicking. I think so. The goal was in setting this out early was to try to get this as close to the final as we could today. So that we don't have to go through the process of sending it out again and having everybody look at it again, and just to so that's why it's authorizing us in conjunction with the chair and the streetscape chair and legal counsel to do this. Now, if you want to include the whole board in it, then we're risking bringing it back for another month. Which, if you guys want to decide to do that, that's fine. But it's going to push back our timeline and it's going to change things in terms of when we get this up and running. It's your fault. I mean, I'm just telling you that that's the way it has to be. If we're going to stay within the way that we can, you know, govern this, that's just being really truthful with you guys. That's, that's how we have to do this. So, what if we just uh, vote on subject to our legal counsel adding the 60 day time frame yeah. and the exhibit that we're all going to get today? Those are incorporated into the final document. 
and, and for the each member of the board should get a full executed copy. As a matter of fact, yeah, you can you can definitely have that. You can definitely have that. I'm saying, yeah, I I guess what I'm saying is that let's say you get the copy and you say, well, there's something in there that's off. Maybe. I don't know the cost or something. Let's just use an example here. And you say, okay, well, I don't, I don't approve it. I don't approve it at that. And so now we're like, well, we got to have a motion to reapprove it now, based off of these changes. We would not be able to do that over email or anything like that. We would have to either have another emergency board meeting or wait until our September board meeting. Well, why can't it be ratified? Why can't it be agreed to after this session? Like, let's say that you finalize a contract and you send it out to everyone. Um, you get quorum to agree via email, phone call, whatever. Yeah, you can't, and you can't, can't ratify. You can't do that. You can't ratify. Yeah, it can. It doesn't get ratified. It has, no, you can't do it over email or phone. It has to be in person. Oh, you can't do electronic voting. Can't do electronic voting. Yeah. So it's subject to no material changes. So, well, I like what you said. But there's not, I think let's go back to your point. Your point is there shouldn't be any other. If we're going to go with this, there shouldn't be any to this red line version that's going to be clean. There should be no further changes to it. Subject at all to subject to whatever else council, council and everything else. Yeah. Council yeah. and the 60 day notice. The 60 day notice right. and the schedule attached. Right. All exhibits attached. And, and, and all the exhibit document Yeah, we can, can, yeah, we can send that out. That's not, there's no, I have no problem with that. And obviously, that would, if I was on a board, I would want that. I'm just saying, if there's any type of changes or anything that's made after that, it would have to be done in a formal meeting. That's what I'm saying. Material right. changes. Right. Things they negotiate that are not. Yeah. Or grammatical error is in there. Right, That's exactly. Right. Exactly. So I just want I just want to add I, I just want to say what I said before. We didn't bring it up again, but I would like to see uh, some extended term option uh, language included in here um, uh, for this uh, the second term uh, if the bid term gets extended. So we authorize them to negotiate that. Yes, and put it in the contract. But so long as Briggs, our attorney, says we're allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Board chair and street stick chair would agree with that. Yes. I, I would just say that a two year deal with one of the options is a, is a thing to market free lending as it is. All my deals are one year. I don't have any it, all our all of our 17 millions of career in space we don't do any deals more than you know, two years so i'm just saying that extending further to beyond that is not in terms of well, from, the, not from, the well, from the standpoint of, of of our opportunity to get um to, to just have options not extending it but to have options to extend it the only reason you would do options if you were to lock these guys down to a particular price point which would have to be negotiated that was the way we get options. Yeah, I didn't mean, well, options. Well, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about uh, locking in certain prices subject to uh, you know the, the, the increases that you would typically uh, uh, you know, need to be, need, need to address. So just you know whatever the base rate would be, plus you know cost of living or wages and so forth. I I just like it to be looked at. The, yeah. only, the only thing for food for thought for everybody too is that when the bid is renewed, the scope of services could change. And so they could go up, they could go down. And so that's another thing. Typically, that's a good point. the way that we've always done it is that our contracts usually end under bid expires with a one year option because then what it gives us the leeway to do is go back and negotiate with the vendor at that time. For example, when Hollywood expired in 2009, we started in 2010, we went back and renegotiated the contract with Queen Street because we had included the whole area of Gower between Hollywood and the 101 freeway. Similar with your bid, when it renewed in 2011, we included the whole section in Vine from La Mirada all the way down to Santa Monica and we renegotiated that with Queen Street because that had to be added. So to Brian's point, I can see why you would want to do that, but the flip side of that, just, you know, like I said, man, make the suggestion, Brian, you can say no. Maybe a better way to approach it is uh, put a clause in that says something along the lines of uh, parties agree that if and when bid should be renewed, they'll uh, address extension issues in good faith based upon based upon uh, the business environment in terms of contract in terms of time. Well, yeah, that kind of 
that kind of defeats the purpose of blocking and rates. And, and I look at it from the standpoint that, um, you know, he's here. <laughs> Um, if he's willing to, to, to lock in certain base rates, and then if we, we add services or whatever it may be, it would be based on whatever the rates are for those added services that would be added on to the base rates that he'd be willing to give us for an extended term. I just like the idea of having some locked in numbers in there that you know it may be below the market or above the market, but at least it puts us in a, in a position where we can, uh, we can look at that and, uh, and have those options available to us if, if Steve's willing to do it. Is the Yelly City minimum wage, uh, aren't there different stratas that are changing over the course of the next five yeah. years? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. the other factor. I mean, again, since you're in a political environment, those things can change. So it's hard to, I think also it's just hard to, to know where those numbers are going to go. I mean, there's no, you know, $15 or something, right? Right, for 2020. So that would be within, if you send these terms out, would be within those terms. You'd have to put that in there. Or what if it gets rescinded, you know, so I think it gets, I'm just saying that there's so many variables that it gets tricky as you, move, as you try to extend it beyond even two years. You, you are gonna have to put those, those, those potential variables in there. Yeah. I'm just saying, you create a baseline. That's, that's what the rate's going to be, and it's going to be subject to these other variables. And, and, uh, and then we can make that decision. At that time, we can look so at it. What, I, I'm, 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 I don't know what it is. Give us the language that you want so that well, we can solve for this. We, we, right we, now, I'm unclear. Well, I don't know, Steve. Do you understand what I'm asking I'm, for? Yeah, you're looking for us to lock in a price in option years past the 28 months. Correct. And then, and that would be subject to wages, increases in wages. Um, um, and, 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 and adjusting it accordingly for, for, for that. But we basically get a locked in price for the services that we're getting um, uh, uh, extended for those option periods. I think right now what we've done, Joe, is I think I've given you guys 36 months uh, guaranteed pricing and you prorated down to 28. Right. So in theory, I, we've locked you in for three years right now, which is past the 28 months when the bid expires and went for renewal. There's something else. I mean, I'm not sure how much past that you want to go because right now you're locked in for three years. Yeah, I, think I think it's sufficient. I think it's good, and it's also, like I said, it, we already know at the highest point it's going to be below our budget, and even if our budget state remain the same for the next few years. So I, I, I mean, as far as costs are, I'm personally not as concerned about it. But again, I also like to have the flexibility just because. It's you know, going through two renewals now, I'd like to be able to, when we start up with a vendor, you know, also kind of say, because it's to our benefit to also say, hey, now we've included this area or we're upping our services by this. We want, you know, to maintain this contract. <coughs> Let's talk about how we can negotiate the price. I think for what's important to note is for a vendor like us, the more hours on the street lowers your overhead. And so it's, it's, <coughs> it, it's kind of better not to have it locked in past those three years, because if you do add a lot of staff, we're going to rework that budget and the overhead costs will come down because we're spreading it out over all the hours deployed. I guess what I'm what I'm asking for, and I'm not, a good point. I'm not going to push it any further than this, is we've got a one-year option to extend it. I would like to suggest that we we add two additional one-year options. And uh, and, and then it's it's a it, uh, at least we that's have standard that in our contracts. That's standard. We have a, a three year with two one year renewal options. That's our standard contract. I believe that was what was in there until we talked about the 28 months originally. Sorry, I probably missed this, but what's the value of an option if there's no economics tied to it? Sure. Sure. It, 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 it just too many moving parts. If we weren't renewing, I'm, I'm, right, I'm saying the same Yeah, right. But because right. we're renewing and the scope of services could change dramatically. It's it's hard to give a baseline. Meeting, I think uh, I get your point, but I think we'll just have to negotiate in good faith prior to the expiration. If that's what their standard contract is to give the additional two years options, I can't see how it can hurt. And and if we have these baselines that are already established, and Steve puts those in there for for the potential extensions we've got. 
something that we can look at that's that's there that we can take or leave. So let me ask one more question. Sure. If we do not send a notice within 60 days, does it automatically renew and that option is exercised? No, we go to month to month basically. Okay. And and the reason why and so as yeah, that's said, a good point. I it, I wouldn't want it automatically. Yeah, we don't want it automatically. I wouldn't want it automatically. Month it's month to month, and, and the reason why, so to Steve's point, the reason why we didn't do the standard two years was because of bid renewal. And so, what had happened was this this contract would expire December twenty eighteen. We wanted to have an option to lock in the cost for that third year, at least another year if we had to, so we could keep services going when the bid is renewed. And so we had some type of point to go from, but we would obviously want to renegotiate that contract before then based off the new scope of services, based off what the new bid looks like. If we expand, if we don't expand, I don't know. But that's kind of why we left it at that. And to your point, I agree with you. I, I didn't see point, old, old, old. Bill in, so yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's yeah. The other point is that the, all that equipment will be paid for too. So it's kind of hard, all that would drop off the rolls uh, on, the, on the 28 months or the 36 months. So the cost is really down when you start looking at negotiating years four and five, that equipment is still operational, still usable. Sounds like to me there's so many moving parts to actually leave it the way it is, I think it's better. I agree. So let's let's first see if we can get a motion to do just that. And that's to authorize the staff with board president, street state chair, legal counsel to negotiate a contract with Street Plus subject to making sure that there's that 60 day uh, period in the building contract where we establish established performance, established performance standards and we've got the matrix uh, in the exhibit. And all exhibits are included. Yes. All exhibits mm -hmm. are included. And then the board will all get a uh, final copy yeah. before, it's, before it's executed. Subject to no material no changes. Material changes. Does somebody have all that written down somewhere right now? Yes. 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 Okay. So, do you want to have a motion? Anyone want to make a motion on that? Yes. Okay. Anyone to second that motion? Second. Okay. Let's take a vote. All approve. Oppose. Abstain. So that motion is approved. Okay, thank you. Just one point also that maybe the other board members don't know, but in our proposal, there is a document called the Plus Promise, and that is some performance standards that are already there that if we don't do it, you get a credit on your invoice. So we have those, and it's just a matter of you guys negotiating what those will be. We have a standard benchmark. That's perfect. Yeah, you do so many bids, you must have all that. We do, we do. So, thank you very much. It was great to meet you guys. Looking forward to learning more later on. And if you have any questions, you know, give me a call. Congratulations. Thank you very much, guys. We're very happy. So, other items, uh, new business. Uh, oh, I still need to go to the. A part of marketing. Yes, oh, okay. Sunset. Okay, sunset. Yeah. Well, do we need? Do we need uh, another board?